Hi, I'm glad that you have stuck with us and that we are ready to begin our session for today. Uh, first, one very important thing that I want you to keep in mind throughout everything that I'm going to be talking about, and that is that the internet and the web are not the same thing, okay? Certainly, we tend to use uh, the term, you know, sometimes, oh, I'm online, oh, I look on the web, oh, I'm going to look in the internet. Yeah, we understand that. That's for whenever you are socializing and you're out there, right? However, for terms of this class and to begin your journey into computing literacy, you got to know that the internet and the web are not the same thing. So let's get the party started. So as I mentioned, we'll begin talking about the internet and the web. So let's take a look at what the internet actually is. The internet is the hardware that connects networking equipment, okay? Emphasis here in the word hardware. Then we know that the web is the interface to access information and other resources available on the internet. So. One thing that I want you to remember in here before I get a little bit more in detail is that whenever you are online, that means that you're actually connected to the network, okay? If we think of the internet as hardware, basically it's everything that whenever you get upset, you kick. So if you kick your computer, that is part of the internet. If a router, a switch, or a cable is, are not working properly, you pull them, you manipulate them physically, that is hardware. Therefore, that is part of the internet, okay? So that's the internet. Now, the web is how you actually access the stuff that it's stored in the internet. Because if we had a bunch of equipment networked together, right, but I don't have a particular way or a common way to access information, then the internet will be there, but the web will not be there because the web is the one that allows me to actually access whatever is stored in the internet, okay? So keep that in mind. We're gonna sort of review these things as we go in the next few minutes, okay? So let's start uh, talking about the history of the internet, okay? First of all, we need to know that the internet was launched during the Cold War. Okay, so that is important. It was in the 1960s. We have 1969, but there is some uh, difference in, in uh, dates if you go and look around. However, we're gonna think that it was during the Cold War, sometime during the Cold War, perhaps before we know it, but it was secret, so we, we didn't know, right? Now, the purpose of that during the war was to secure military communication and the preservation of information. So basically what they were trying to do is the following. They were afraid that, that the Soviet Union was going to actually bomb the United States. So they were afraid that if they had a computer with all the military information and everything that, they, that was so important to the United States, and a mi missile will come and you know, explode right there and destroy the computer, they will have no access to that information. So they were thinking, oh my God, we need sort of to back that up you know, somewhere from in different computers that uh, we have access to it. And then somebody thought, well, you know, what if instead of having it in here and manually backing it up, what if we connect some computers and we have them share the information? The idea was that if something, one of the computers got bombed, the others will still have the information and they will be resilient. They will be like, oh, even if two of them will be, you know, blown away, there were still some others working and perhaps, you know, some of them were in secret locations and things like that. So basically what they were trying to do was to protect the information. And that's why one of the very important characteristics of the internet is that it's resilient. Something goes down, a piece of equipment, cables, or remember hardware, that's the internet. Part of that goes away. It's okay. You know, the, the rest of, of, of it can survive. It's sort of like that movie Terminator where they destroy the guy or they throw away, you know, the, the bad guy, the arm or something, and then whoo, it just regenerates. That's what the purpose was when they were actually building the internet. And I think that they pretty much succeeded because I am pretty sure that we cannot even imagine how we will actually turn the internet off, right? Okay, let's continue. So continuing with the history of the internet, 
the internet, you know, evolved uh, from the ARPANET. Now the ARPANET stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, and it contained, it was connecting four uh, universities. The University of California at LA, the Stanford Research Institute, the University of California at Santa Barbara, and uh, the University of Utah at Salt Lake City. Now, go figure that out, right? Everything was sort of in this part of the coast, in the West Coast, and then all of a sudden Utah was in there. Now, maybe they haven't been very proactive in keeping stuff uh, up to date with the latest and greatest in technology, but they were very important part, Utah was a very important part of the development of the internet. Now, that is a fun fact for you to share with your friends, okay? But aside from everything that is, is connected, you know, we talk about the internet being all the equipment that is connected. But we also talk about the resilient, uh, the resilience, the resiliency of information. Okay, so if anything goes down, there must be another way to access it. So um, it is like a mesh of networks. And if you want to access one particular computer from another, you have a particular path. The path breaks, you take another path. No big deal. Right? It's just like when you are in the Pearl City traffic and you know there's traffic one way, you may take an alternate route, but you still get to the end. Okay? Well, however, somebody had to come up with rules on how to actually send information from one place to another. And for that, we have two great scientists. So let's talk about them. In order to develop the protocols, the ways that the, the internet you know, allows for connectivity, we had Vin Cerf and Robert Kahn. These guys are very, very smart people and they developed uh, TCP IP, which is the main protocol of the internet during uh, the 1970s. So they were very smart guys and they are doing this during the 1970s. So that just makes me wonder, did they ever learn how to dance disco? I don't think so, because instead of going and doing the disco dance, ah, they were actually building the internet for us to use and to go back in YouTube and watch disco videos, right? So you see some people actually dedicate their lives to do this kind of research and actually they are still uh, working at it, okay? They are doing different things, like we know that Vince Cerf works for Google, so uh, they are still collaborating because they actually, isn't that amazing that a little project that they started with grew so much as to hold all the information all around the world. That is just fantastic. Let's continue. So let's talk about the web now. Okay, now the web is the other part, is part of the internet. The web is gonna allow you to interface with the internet, okay? And uh, uh, we need to be aware of what kind of resources are on the internet so that we can actually access them via the web and we need to access them efficiently, efficiently, lawfully and ethically, okay? Now, keep that in mind, okay? In here, we're talking about the, the way in which we actually are going to access those resources, okay? And that is part of being computing literate. Now, when I'm telling you that the web is a subset of the internet, is the way in which we access it. You probably have looked at URLs when you're accessing the web, and, and you see that there is the HTML at the end. It says H .html. Well, HTML is part of those protocols that allow you to use the web, you know, to access resources on the internet via the web. Okay, let's continue. So where was this born, the web? Well, the web was first born in CERN, in the Center for European Nuclear Research. Now, that is in Switzerland. And uh, basically what it was is just a bunch of links put together so that people could actually uh, link one document to another related document. And the father, the father of the web is actually Sir Teams Berners-Lee, and he's the one that actually developed the World Wide Web standards, okay? Basically what happened is that Sir Tim Berners-Lee 
was really tired of like, oh, if I want to share something or if I have this particular document and this document is related to this other document, there must be a way for me to link them. So I don't have to look at one and then going in the files and try to find what relates to that. So he's the one that actually came up with the concept of a hyperlink, linking one page to another and then from that to the next and so on. So he effectively created the web. You know, so it was a very simple concept and actually he had a hard time getting it across. When he tried to, to put it out there, people were like, oh, why do we need that? That is not really useful. Yeah, well, it saved me some time, but it's not really all that important. And look at that. He pushed it, pushed it, got it out there, and now everybody and their neighbor uses the web. Okay, but that is not all. So let's think about how do we use the internet and the web together. Let's take a look at some of the things that we actually do in there. Let's go. So um, first of all, at the very beginning, one of the things that you could do was just sharing information. That was web 1.0. Then you beca we began creating content and doing like Facebook and things like that where people could actually publish things. And that was web 2.0. Nowadays, we're more depending on computers. Computers are smarter. They can do more things. So now we're in web 3.0, which helps us generate information. But let's take a quick look at very many different things that we can actually do based on different kinds of web uses. So let's start with one of the first ones is communication. The internet is used for communication. We have email, photos, videos, we have discussions. May I uh, add in here Skype, text messaging, and many of the things that you can actually do in your phone are part of the internet and have to do with communications. Next, we have shopping. We are all aware that the Monday after Thanksgiving is Cyber Monday. So shopping is important and it become part of our lives to actually shop online. We then have searching, searching for information. And for that, we have virtual libraries and many other things. So here I tell you something. Librarians are the hackers of information. Whenever you need something, you know, for a research paper or something, go and talk to a librarian. They are very good at searching and finding information for you. It is important that when you search online, you actually learn to figure out if something is actually a trustworthy uh, source or not. So in here, in the, during the class, we're gonna learn to identify bogus sites. Okay, let's continue. So we have education or e-learning, right? In this case, it's, for example, this course, online course, email, chat, Blackboard, and of course, Laulima. Now, last but not least, we have actually changed our lives into having entertainment delivered via the internet and via the web to our home. So here is the deal. Sometime, long time ago, we thought that having a cable box connected to the internet where we could actually order pizza while we were watching a movie was a thing of like so futuristic that wouldn't happen in the next 30 years. But nowadays, we have everything on demand. We can get videos, we can get pizza, and we can shop for a new TV online. So keep that in mind next time you watch the TV on the internet.